I've always been a huge fan of what people now call point-and-click adventure games, ever since I was introduced to The Secret of Monkey Island over 15 years ago. Now, I'll always have a place for LucasArts in my heart. Well, what used to be them, anyway. But I was also introduced to the Sierra side of this genre, starting with one of their later titles, Gabriel Knight. The first and second games still remain favorites to this day, and I've always thought that I would like to see a more modern take on the more serious side of the genre. Fortunately for me, so did Jane Jensen. Mobius Empire Rising is a game released by Jane Jensen's new studio, Pinkerton Road, and successfully funded by a Kickstarter campaign. This is Malachi Rector, an antiques dealer and appraiser by trade. He's actually quite successful, as the clients pay him a lot of money to make sure that the items in question are actually what they are. So, wait a minute. He's trying to find if the antiques are worth their cash. I'm suing for gimmick infringement! Anyway, the small comic that's available with the game explains his past and why he seems... a bit more antisocial than he should be. After arriving back in the States from a stay in a Spanish hospital, Mr. Rector finds himself involved with an organization called FIDA. The head of the organization sends him on a trip to find out historical connections to a person that's recently been murdered. Eventually, he finds an unlikely ally, then a quest to find a historical pattern that could bring about a prosperous future. It's a rather odd story, I'll admit, but once again we have a very good blend of two worlds with a little bit of secret government agency thrown in. And in all honesty, it's not that bad. Clearly, the story is the main strength of the game, and it's done well with both the writing and the actors. The main voice actors can show the strengths and weaknesses of each individual you run across, and the guy who plays Malachi shows that even the most stoic individual can have feeling. The story is incredible. While I was able to predict some of the outcomes, it was never disappointing. I was always interested to see how everything unfolded, from Malachi's involvement with Fida to the different objectives in each of the locales. When things were predicted, it was always exciting to see what came next, and in those moments where things took a swerve, the swerve was always something that I liked, and it kept me glued to my seat. As for the puzzle elements, this game has puzzles aplenty. However, we can thankfully take out the Roberta Williams Moon Logic puzzles. Almost none of the puzzles were so insane that I wanted to throw a chair at my monitor, and when things did get a little bit too frustrating, there is a small hint system in place in Malachi's phone. It just does enough to point you in the right direction, but not necessarily how to do it. Sometimes it is a little hard to figure out what to click on. After all, most of these games almost require that you click on every single pixel in order to find every single item in the game. While this was a characteristic of the genre, it was quite an annoying one. Fortunately, Mobius has a feature where you can either go to the top and press a button, or hold the space bar to show all the clickable things and places. It makes things go a tad bit faster and eases the frustration of the player. Usually, I go into the bad points of the game at this point, and this time it's no different. But instead of focusing on the weaknesses of the genre, where, like lack of playthroughs and whatnot, I'd like to focus on the game itself. The review build I got needs... polish. The character models don't need to be perfect, I mean, for crying out loud. I went through the entirety of Tales of Monkey Island without a hitch, but I did see some awkward body positioning in certain areas. 
Some of the items passing between people looked like the item itself was hanging in midair, quite obviously in a couple of places. There were also some clipping issues here and there, even with simple stuff, like when sitting on an armchair. And some of the backgrounds looked sort of pasted on. Granted, a lot of this stuff was found when I wasn't glancing at it. But when I can see a sort of line between the background and the foreground, it's time to look at the positioning of pictures again. There are a couple of other issues I ran into, but it only happens in very specific circumstances. I have a dual screen set up, and I'm able to move the mouse outside of the gameplay area to get my second screen. This is very unusual, and doesn't cause an issue since you can just get back into the game by alt-tabbing. Unless you're recording footage using fraps, at which point it's impossible to get back and you have to close the game in order to start playing again. This leads to a slight gripe here, the save system. In this day of autosave states, I'm surprised this game doesn't have one. Now I know that's very old school, and it harkens back to the days of save and save often, but even some of the newer point-and-click adventure games have some sort of autosave system. This is more of a laziness gripe than anything else, but just make sure you save, otherwise you might accidentally set yourself back a few hours if you have to leave the game. The only other gripe I have is the fact that you can die in this game. Unfortunately, as I mentioned, I was brought up in the LucasArts vein of point-and-click, meaning there was no real way to die in each of these games, unlike most of the Sierra ones. Thankfully, most of these points do have a retry point, and it doesn't put you that far away from the point where you need to be. However, combine this with what looks like a weird quick time event, and this just gets annoying. This only happens once, but in all honesty, it really shouldn't be there in the first place. Well, this was certainly an interesting return to the Sierra style of point-and-click adventure games. But is Mobius, Empire Rising, worth your... Yeah, I know, I had to make this prop sucks. I never got a box. The game retails at 24 bucks at most digital outlets like Steam, Good Old Games, and Phoenix Online's own store. With the lack of polish on this, I'm not sure if it's worth the full price yet. This doesn't mean the game itself is bad. It's a fantastic return to form on the Sierra-style point-and-click adventure game. If you like this genre of game, I highly suggest checking it out. Otherwise, I'd wait for a sale. I haven't had this much fun with a game like this since Beavis and Butthead Virtual Stupidity. Okay, albeit for different reasons. I liked the characters, the puzzles weren't completely insane, and the storytelling was awesome. I can definitely look forward to the retelling of Gabriel Knight's story for the 20th Anniversary Edition. Just... please... can I get a box?